After the rapture of the church and after the days of great tribulation in this world, Christ, he will return. He will come back to this world for what we call the second coming of Christ. The second coming of Christ, we should not confuse with the rapture of the church. At the days of the rapture, Christ will call out his church. He will not set foot in this world. But at his second coming, Christ will set foot in this world. Well, he will establish his 1000 year reign, the reign that we call the millennial kingdom. So as we see in the opening verse of our lesson this week, Christ will return in his glory to this world and he will sit on his throne, no doubt about it. At that time, all of those that live through the great tribulation will gather before Christ as he sits on his throne and they will be separated one from another as a shepherd divides his sheep from goats. This judgment, it should not be confused with the judgment at the judgment seat of Christ. It should not be confused for the judgment at the great white throne as well. The judgment that would take place at the judgment seat of Christ, that is for the church. That is all of those that genuinely, sincerely believe in Christ. The great white throne judgment is for all of those who are of wickedness. It is their final judgment where they will face eternal condemnation. This judgment that we're taking a look at here it takes place at the start of the Millennial Kingdom, where Christ will determine who will inherit the Millennial Kingdom and who will not inherit the Millennial Kingdom. It becomes plain and clear who will and will not be allowed into the Millennial Kingdom. Jesus, as we are told here in these verses, will set the sheep on his right, and the goats will be set to his left. To those on the right, the sheep, we see that they will inherit the Kingdom which was prepared for them. Now, this is a verse that shows us that the millennial kingdom, it is certainly for those who come through the period of great tribulation. Now, I have talked to you about the great tribulation, but I want to show you in scripture the reference of the great tribulation as well. Now, as we see there in the 24th chapter of Matthew's gospel, the great tribulation, it comes after the rapture of the church. Now, we'll notice in those verses there that this period of great tribulation, it won't be all that long. It's going to be a short period of time. However, what this scripture makes very clear to us is that this period of great tribulation, it will be like no other tribulation that the world has ever seen before. We think that we have seen tribulation in our world, and, and I believe that we certainly have seen tribulation in our world, but this tribulation will be like none that this world has ever seen before. So during this period, we'll see there, there's going to be great suffering. And we'll see this suffering in our scripture for our lesson today when I get back over to it. But here in the 23rd, the 24th, and the 25th verse, we see that there's going to be great suffering. Along with that suffering, we see that there also will be false Christ that will arise and they will proclaim to be Christ. In these verses, I want you to see that there is a hint here of the person that will arise during those days. A person who we think is in the world today, but isn't in the world today. The spirit of this person is in the world today, but there's one who will come during the days of great tribulation who is going to deceive the world, this person being the Antichrist. So for those that make it through the period of great tribulation, they will have seen much tribulation. They would have seen much suffering and they will have come through it. And Jesus, he is going to judge how those who went through that period, he's going to judge how they live during that time period. To the sheep on his right, Jesus, he commends for feeding him when he was hungry, giving him drink when he was thirsty, taking him in when he was a stranger, clothing him when he was naked and visiting him when he was sick. So those who love their neighbor, they live for the Lord during those days of great tribulation. and They will be rewarded by Christ because they love their neighbor. They cared for Christ. They'll begin to wonder. They'll begin to question Christ in those days. Well, when did we see you? When did we actually care for you? As we'll see them ask there in the 37th through the 39th verse there. 
Jesus, he gives them an answer in the 40th verse. Jesus, he answers them by saying, in as much as you did it to one of the least of these, you did it to me. This is a verse that reminds me of that old saying that I was taught when I was growing up in that you have to be careful about how you treat those around you because you never know whose presence you are entertaining. You may be entertaining the presence of an angel. You may be entertaining the presence of God himself. So you as a believer, you have to be careful how you treat all of those that are around you. We have been given the great command by Christ himself who said that we should love the Lord with all of our heart. And in that love, we should love our neighbors as we love ourselves. We don't want to be one who is of no love because those who are of no love in their heart, they will not inherit the heavenly kingdom. Such is the judgment for those who come through the great tribulation and stand on the left hand of Christ. Jesus will tell them to depart into everlasting fire, which is prepared for the devil and his angels. Now, the interesting thing about this judgment is that, again, it's not the final judgment. But when we look at that scripture there, it somewhat reads as the final judgment for all of those who will not inherit the millennial kingdom. Because, again, that period of great tribulation, it is essentially the sinner's last chance to get right in the eyes of God. If they don't get right in the eyes of God, if they don't inherit the millennial kingdom, they're certainly not going to be able to inherit the heavenly kingdom. Now, at the end of the millennial kingdom, those that did not inherit the kingdom will be deceived again by the devil to make one final stand against the Lord. We see this in the 20th chapter of the book of the Revelation of Christ. Scripture tells us that they will surround the camp of the saints and the beloved city only to be devoured by the fire that will rain down from God out of heaven. Now, some of you, you may be learning this for the first time. You may be thinking to yourself that all of this sounds like a, a sci-fi movie. You may be thinking to yourself, none of this sounds like it is going to actually happen. But you better believe, I tell you today, you better believe that this will happen. All of this will happen because it is God's divine will. In God's divine will, it is always done. Now, those that won't be allowed to inherit the millennial kingdom will be those that were apathetic in their hearts. They had no love in their hearts. They will have seen Christ in need, but they will have chose not to help him at all. We'll see there in the 44th through the 46th verse that they'll be left wondering, well, when did we see you in need? When did we not help you out? To which, just as he did with those who are on the right hand, he will say that he was the person that they chose to ignore. For these folks, again, they are condemned to everlasting punishment. So not only will they not inherit the millennial kingdom, let's make it very clear here. They will have no part of the eternal heavenly kingdom. Now, in the seventh chapter of the book of Revelation, we'll see that those that do inherit the millennial kingdom, those tribulation saints, they will also inherit the heavenly kingdom. We actually see them in John's witness of the heavenly kingdom where the tribulation saints, they will be arrayed in white robes. They will be rejoicing for the Lord. So our biggest takeaway from our lesson today should be this. Even though this judgment is for all of those who live during the period of great tribulation in this world, we should understand today that the Lord is going to judge us according to the same measure. Whether we loved him by loving our neighbors as we love ourselves. You see, if you don't do this, then the Lord is not going to allow you into his heavenly kingdom. Again, love is what will make up the heavenly kingdom of God. As I have preached for the past month now, we should live sincerely in love in this world today. We should live by the word of God. And the word of God commands us to love him and to love our neighbors as we love ourselves. If we do this, then we become holy and righteous. If we do this, we will be able to inherit the heavenly kingdom. We'll walk through the gates of heaven. If we don't do this, if we don't love the Lord, if we don't love our neighbors as we love ourselves, God is not going to allow us in. So the biggest takeaway that we learned today from our lesson is love, love, love. Love the Lord and love your neighbor as you love yourself.